présenter de façon synthétique, one may choose to do it the following way. There are two main fields, two fronts. The first one is the depletion of natural resources. The first resources we are depleting are the fossil resources. 85% of our energy being consumed in the world is of fossil origin. And yet we already are obliged to go and find oil and gas in very difficult conditions under the ice cap, in the sea, in the bedrock, at uh, very important depths with the vertical and horizontal drilling processes. Obviously, this increases progressively the cost of the energy we use. We use more petrol in order to uh, find more petrol, and it's uh, the same for gas, and it's starting to be the same for coal. We have the same problem with metals. We are depleting our metal reserves. Well, some metals are very abundant on the surface, but we can only use exploit them when they are concentrated for bacterial reasons, for instance, or and those reserves have already been exhausted or where they're nearing exhaustion. Some metals, uh, such as gallium, only a few dozen tons are being produced in the world. We're nearing exhaustion. Others, such as copper or iron, we still produce larger quantities, but we are nearing exhaustion of uh, resources, uh, the production of which is acceptable for in terms of energy. There are places where we lack sand or water. We also have a problem with biotic resources, um, fishes, etc. And generally speaking, between 1970 and 2010, we have destroyed about half of the mammals, the birds, the fishes, the reptiles, the amphibians present on Earth. Everywhere, vital resources for human activities are being destroyed. We are simply exhausting them. And then there is a second front, that of uh, biosphere system regulations, the front of uh, planet limits. Now, when we go over those limits, we tilt the whole Earth system towards a different kind of balance. And that's exactly what we have already achieved. There are nine limits, the carbon cycle with climate, there is biodiversity, there is a cycle of nitrogen and phosphorus, the meaning of oceans, the uh, ozone layer depletion, water, the uh, soil usage, aerosol sprays, nine of those uh, domains uh, are present, and we know that uh, we have uh, the figures for four of those limits, and since 2015, we've gone over four of those limits. The reference essays are Rockstrom 2009 and uh, January of 2015 for Stiffen. We have gone over the limit for the uh, climate and carbon cycle, biodiversity and erosion, uh, the um, nitrogen phosphorus cycle limit also has been uh, cleared and finally uh, deforestation. And this is very important because we tilt the whole planet uh, over to a different balance. It's the Anthropocene, the era that is starting now, characterized by the fact that humanity has become a geological force. We have had an impact on uh, plaque tectonic, uh, on volcano uh, activity because of the uh, ice cap, which is melting. But these problems are not visible, and the words we use to qualify them are absolutely essential because most of those problems are not visible. We don't see the fact that there are 400 molecules of carbon dioxide in a volume of 1 million molecules of air. We don't see the micropollutants present even in this room. We do not feel radionuclides, etc. The word environment itself that we went uh, and found uh, for the French language in the 70s, uh, with Vinal de la Blache had already penetrated uh, our language in uh, the 20th century, but we found that we needed a new word to qualify new problems, and at the same time, the word environment is very anthropocentric. We are a geological force. We already have an influence on the uh, Earth system itself. So three words, pollution, crisis, and uh, risk. Pollution, very quickly. You've heard about pollution. I even forgot it. Sorry, I forgot to talk about pollution when I talked about depletion and when I talked about the 
and our nine limits, I forgot pollution. Pollution is one of, chemical pollution is one of those nine limits. So it's very serious for sanitary reasons, and yet it only represents a small share of the environmental issues. So an environmental problem is not only pollution that it would be uh, very limited uh, as a field of vision. There are also other technical aspects, and there are mainly problems of flow. These techniques with the rebound effect will allow us to increase flows, but not to solve the problems that we're facing nowadays. People talk about a crisis, but I don't think crisis is the right word. Imagine three degrees of uh, temperature increase by the end of the century. There would still be two degrees in the pipeline, so we know there would be another two degrees at the end of the 21st century for the next 5,000 years. This would continue, and then for several thousand years, it would go down. Can you call that a crisis? A crisis is a difficult time that you have to go through. This is not a crisis. This is simply a new state for the planet. And if we go too far in the degradation, then we are going to compromise the existence of humankind on Earth, and that I would not call a risk, it would be meaningless. A risk is a limited type of damage, and the damage that you can compensate for. Now, if the Earth became hostile, inhabitable, if people could no longer live on planet Earth, this would not be a risk. This would be a transcendental damage. So it's very important to find the right words to refer to those problems. Of course, the words can change in time, but we have to find words to refer to those environmental issues because most of them we cannot feel with our own senses.